Hello everyone, welcome to Heart's Happiness Podcast. The place where I, Manpreet, share my journey of healing intergenerational family trauma to help you to understand your story. I share a bunch of tools and tips that will transform your mental health and allow you to find your own heart's happiness. So exciting, right? Each episode will cover one of three areas. One, raising awareness of what this trauma actually is and how it hides in our lives. Two, tools, tips, support, lots of different things that I've used to get better and heal from this trauma. And three, I'll be connecting you with so many specialists and therapists and coaches as guests on my show. So we are going to transform your mental health and empower you to take your healing by the hands and move forward. Hello, welcome back for another episode of Heart's Happiness. It's a new month, so it's November 2022. How crazy is that? This year is flying by. A new month means a new theme. So this month we are exploring intuition. And you can go into that deeper in my Rewrite Your Story membership because our intuition is a free resource that lives inside of us, that is an inner coach that can guide us on our journey of healing from past trauma and to create a life that makes us truly happy. And we all have that within us. So I love teaching about it. So in the membership, it's just $15.99. For that, you get two membership calls on Zoom, one where it's a masterclass and one where we do a QA. and a We also have a Facebook group. You can watch replays and also you have access to homework to go into this theme deeper. Because It is such a powerful thing to be able to connect to your intuition and you have that available to you anytime. But I'm going to go through that more today in this solo episode where I'm talking about my own journey with my intuition just to help you to maybe relate it to your own. So how do we connect to our intuition? Let's talk about first what our intuition is not. There is a very loud voice in your head that is super loud, that's super fast, that's super cautious, that's giving you all of the thousand reasons why you shouldn't do something or you can't do something and is beating you up and it can be very fast and it can make you feel like your heart's racing and you don't feel very well and you feel very anxious and that is your voice of fear, that is your ego and the whole point of our ego is our very primal part of our brain to protect us from danger. So it doesn't take in the context of the big situation. It's just trying to keep, to keep you safe. That's the whole point of it. Because if you're being chased by a tiger, it's like, no, you need to go that way. You need to be really still. You need to be really quiet. Its voice is just trying to help you to survive. And it gives you the information to stop you doing something, to keep you safe based on your past experience. So that's how your past traumas are affecting your voice of fear in your head and that's not being relevant to right now in this whereas your intuition is not like that it's a very quiet gentle voice it only gives you a little bit of information it requires you just to trust and to take action on that little baby step and it won't be trying to tell you all the things that can go wrong or or anything it's not doing that it's very gentle and it's very supportive and it's very kind and it's very compassionate and it lives within your body. So it's not that fast voice in your head, but deep within your body. So it will be different for all of you, but I sort of hear mine very much in my gut, in my heart when it guides me. But I was very disconnected from that voice because when you've grown up with so much trauma and you are so in every day you are in survival mode because you're like, I don't know if my dad's going to be okay today. So I can't relax. I can't relax and listen to my intuition. (laughs) I can't be quiet and be still because I need to be on high alert. So how can I listen to my intuition? How do I even know what that is? And I certainly was in a habit from childhood of being trapped in that, you know, survival voice in my head that was lots of times really helping me with my situation with my dad or in my home environment. So I'm really grateful for it. But what happened as I got older, when I started my healing journey, a good... Oh, seven years ago, maybe eight years ago, um, where I started to really be trapped in my fear and it was running my life. It was getting worse. So I had found myself in a really toxic, um, I don't know if you can call it a relationship, an obsession with an unavailable man. And my brain was going overboard, trying to tell me 
all the things I could be doing to um, make him love me so that I could feel safe. So it was like, you know, do all these things. And it was very fast. It was very anxious. It was very hypervigilant. It was giving my, telling me to give my power away. It was really toxic, this voice in my head. And I was doing what it was telling me to do, like I'd done my whole life. But I wasn't sleeping and I wasn't feeling good and I was depressed and I was having suicidal thoughts. So it wasn't supporting me, but it was so loud I couldn't hear the quieter voice in my body that was telling me something else. But my body was trying to give me signs by the not sleeping, by the physically not feeling great. It was giving me signs, but I was ignoring them. And then one day when I started my journey of healing, I started to learn how to do self-care practices and self-love. So I started to meditate. I started to go for walks. I started to invest in getting some help. Like I had Reiki. That's one of the first things I ever did for myself. And in that stillness, I started to hear the little voice. And the little voice told me to leave my job, to just give in my notice and to just leave my job and that it will help me to resolve the situation. It didn't tell me why. It didn't tell me what job I was going to get. It just told me to take action and to leave that job. And that little voice kept repeating to me, you got to leave this job. You got to leave this job. So I did. I gave in my notice. Um, I didn't have another job, but I had three months to find one. It made absolutely no sense. I didn't have the money. I was in a lot of debt. I had bills to pay, but I followed the voice. And then I panicked and my fear voice and my ego voice went crazy. Like, what are you going to do? This is madness. You're not going to be able to cope. Like, what are you doing? But again, I knew, went back to the stillness. And it's like, no, no, you did the right thing. You gave up your job. So then I started to apply for jobs. And, you know, recruiters kept putting me forward for jobs that I'd already been doing. But that didn't feel good to me. You know, even though my brain liked it because that was a safer option, my body and that little voice was like, no, you're meant to do something different this time. Apply for jobs that you really like. And that was the little quiet inner guidance, my inner coach talking to me, telling me what I needed to do. So I applied for loads of jobs that maybe I wasn't experienced for or maybe were out of my comfort zone. And I applied for a job at the BBC, which I, you know, I did have skills, obviously, but I hadn't come from a media background. So I didn't know if it was going to work for me. And I loved um, being interviewed by my boss. Like she was amazing. She's a great friend now. And it just felt so right. And I got that job. So I just followed that in inner guidance of leave your job, of go for jobs that are not like what other people are trying to get you from do. And then, you know, that job is where I met my husband. So, um, and you know, I, there was a lot of intuition I had to listen to to get me to, you know, being with my husband because then the next voice would be stop contact with that person. Then the next voice would be go get therapy. The next voice would be go to a meeting, like a codependency meeting or a love addiction meeting. The next step would be, you know, um, like it actually encouraged me to date, for example, and I was really bad at dating. But that made me realise I needed to get help and then it helped me figure out what kind of help I needed. So every time my intuition was giving me a little baby step of what I could do, it was leading me to like the next step. And I just had to have faith and take that step each time. And I can't tell you, like having therapy and all of those things was amazing and it was so helpful to me and I needed other people on my journey so much but listening to that inner guidance is truly what is changing my life and what I try to help my clients with is to clear through their trauma so they can connect to their own voice so what I'd love for you to try is to slow down and start to hear the little whisper write it down and try to follow its action So it's not that loud voice in the head, but the quieter voice. You know, maybe it's the one that led you to listen to this podcast, because I'm telling you that would probably be your intuition. Maybe it's the voice that tells you to go get some help or to, you know, um, invest some money into treating yourself. It could be just anything, 
but follow it because it's always right. And sometimes it's been sneaky with me. It's told me to do something that maybe wasn't the best. So it has guided me to situations that didn't feel great. Like it told me when I should date people, like go on Tinder and date. And it was not a great experience. But I really think that that's why it was telling me to do that. Because it's through, you know, when I was dating that I started to realise how bad you know, my patterns were like, I was crazy and obsessive over the people that were horrible. But the people that were nice, I was talking myself out of. And that experience helped me to know that I had to get therapy. And even though I didn't have the cash, and I didn't know how it was going to work out. I knew I absolutely had to, to be able to move forwards. And it's done that before as well. When I was stuck in a, a situation with an unavailable man and obsessing about it, it brought that person closer to me which made me crazier, basically. So sometimes it's guiding us to almost turn the heat up on a problem so that we can get that bravery in us to take the bigger step. So that's what we have to do. We just have to take action on what that little voice is telling us to do. And like I said, it will never give us too much information, which is really annoying. I wish it would but it doesn't. It just gives you that little bit of information, you know? So like, I remember very clearly over a year ago, it told me it's time, quit your job now. And I was just like, what? You know, my flat hadn't sold. There was a lot of financial things outstanding. I didn't, I was like, how how am I going to do everything? This doesn't make any sense. But I know from the past that that voice has never been wrong. So I have to be brave and step into it. So I did do what it told me to do. I did quit my job and my flat did sell and it all was fine. And, you know, it's been a year nearly now since I've been full time with my business and it's been challenging and there's been a lot of baby intuitive steps that I've had to follow. But it's always working out and it's always pushing me down the right route. Like it was my intuition that told me to start this podcast, for example. It was my intuition that randomly told me one day, to write tiny Buddha articles when I had been working with like an expert, like a business coach who was like, didn't really think those things were a good idea. But I just really felt from my intuition that it would be good for me to share my story in that way to help people. So that's what I did. And that's each time that's been really amazing for me and my own personal growth and order to help other people and to serve other people. But also you know, to be able to move towards my bigger goals. So my bigger goals with my business, bigger goals with, you know, my life and relationships and money and all these things. So it's so powerful and I can't encourage it enough. Like it's even told me before, like to walk away from relationships and I haven't liked it and I've ignored it. I've ignored it for years, even though it's like, you really need to end this relationship. This relationship isn't good for you. You really need to end it. And I'm just like, no, no, it's too difficult. It's family. I can't do that. Sorry, I can't do that. And I would just ignore it. So it would just get worse. And there would be more and more evidence that my intuition is right. And I should do what it's telling me to do. But I was like too afraid to follow it. But every time it is magnificent. Like this year, I have noticed such amazing things And I will share a lot more about it because I've been on quite the health journey with like planning for a family and my intuition has been guiding me in there. So like, what do I need to do? Like, what steps should I take? So I'm going to book an acupuncturist. I'm going to invest in some blood tests. I'm going to do all these things. And it's my intuition that guided me to do those things to support me on that journey that I have to like have a family later in life. And that is how powerful it is. So I would love for you to slow down and start hearing the little whispers and start taking action on those little baby whispers. And it could have been chatting to you for ages and being like, you know what, you need to book a session with Manbury. You need to book a session with Manbury. And you're just like, no, there's a financial crisis. You know, there's a recession. There's all these bad things happening. I can't be paying for help. That's crazy. But that little voice in you just keeps saying it it's time to listen to that voice because that voice does know what it's talking about. That voice isn't wrong. And that voice just is supporting you and it is helping you to fulfill 
a bigger purpose. Like you are not meant to suffer and be in pain and struggle. You're not meant to. We're all here to grow and to learn and to evolve, which is why I believe that all this horrible trauma happens because it's part of our human experience. But we don't let it need to trap us and stay in these patterns of survival for a really long time. Like we don't need to do that. We can step into being guided by our intuition and allow it to help us to grow. Every year, I am a different person than the year before. And the reason is because I allow that voice to guide me. I trust that voice. And I know that sometimes I can't even understand it completely. But if I allow it to guide me, magical, amazing things start to happen in my life. So I would love for you to start to uncover that voice and help it to guide you to what you are meant to heal and grow past and the life that you're meant to have because it's amazing. And the voice of fear, it holds us back so much. And newsflash, the whole world is run on fear. you got to watch the news for five minutes to see how much, you know, you know, information we're getting constantly about telling us that our, we're not safe. We're not safe because of the economic crisis. We are not safe because of war. We're not safe because of this. We're not safe because of that. And all of that noise, what does it do? It stresses us out. It stresses our bodies out. It makes us stay in patterns of survival of, oh, I can't invest in helping myself because there's all these things going wrong. I can't do it. Like, I won't be safe. But every time that I have gone through and listened to that inner guidance, when it goes against that outside narrative of, I won't be safe because of X, Y, Z, I have been safe. In fact, I have been way better. I have been um, having a much better, happier healthier life because of it and even the times when it's guided me into something that's been uncomfortable and a little bit difficult like buying my house you know was one of those things like it my intuition guided me to Ashford I've never been to Ashford by the way before me and Simon decided to look at houses here but my I think it was one week I heard that town name Ashford like three times And then I discovered somebody that I knew that I'd met through like the internet and I didn't know where she lived, but I followed her on social media and I just thought, oh, she always posts the most incredible pictures. I need to live somewhere like that. And it was Ashford. So my intuition was guiding me to Ashford and it guided me to my house that I now live in. But there was so much drama in buying this house. There was a lot of stress and my intuition wasn't trying to have a nice, easy, simple process for me. It was showing me the process of growth, of healing, and of happiness. So by going through the process of buying this house, which really pushed my nervous system into like extreme stress, I learned so many more tools, powerful tools, to help me regulate my nervous system. And I really started to learn about the nervous system. And that is a massive part of my work now in heart happiness, in how I help the clients. So that's the amazing thing. See, the intuition guided me to this journey with my house. It wasn't an easy road, but it helped me with the things I had to learn so that I can put that into into my work so for you it it would be different you know whatever your journey is and whatever you're meant to be here for and I truly believe we're all here for a reason and we're all here to make a difference and if we follow our guidance our intuition and we keep listening to it it will take us to whatever our purpose is it will take us to our beautiful home our beautiful relationship what makes us happy because it it will reward us for those things and it will sort of uncover what it is that we're meant to do but we just have to slow down and listen slow down and be present stop thinking about all the things that we need to do for other people to and to basically to feel safe because we're trying to you know be in survival like someone I love so much like she's one of the busiest people I know every weekend is busy every evening is busy And I was exactly the same. I didn't used to allow even a moment in my diary where it would be just me and my thoughts. And now I crave that so much. If I don't have time with my thoughts in a day, like I really struggle. Like I really, really struggle. And um, 
but and that's what our society is built on you know this fast pace this have a great you know be really good at your job and be a great parent and you know like i watched like I've, this week is halloween and i've been seeing all these amazing costumes parents have been doing for their kids i'm just like how are they doing this with all the other things they have got to do that is just crazy like how are they doing that and then creating this instagram perfect picture like that is just madness but that's the kind of society that we're living in like showing this perfect image all the time and performing And trying to succeed in these ways that don't feel in line with us, that don't make us feel good. But when we listen to our little voice, you know, it can really guide us to how we can get better, how we can heal, how we can feel healthier, how we can earn more money, how we can have better relationships. Like that is the power of that voice within you. So you have your own inner coach. So slow down. Let fear just do it its thing and quieten down do something that relaxes your body something that worked really well for me at the beginning was having a bath and putting on like really relaxing music I found like my intuition really spoke to me in those moments and start to let it come through and tell you you know how you can move forwards and you can even ask your intuition so that's why I set intentions that's why I get my clients to set intentions Like, I want you to set the intention of what you, you know, like we've got two months left of the year. Let's set an intention for what you really want to, you know, overcome, what you want to grow into for the next two months. You can set that intention and then you might find that your inner coach is talking to you and helping you to guide you to those steps. But you need to slow down and you need to quieten the other voice to be able to hear it. But I promise you, the more and more that you do that and you take action on that voice, you will transform your life. And it could be that that little voice is like, you know what, go read this book, go on that course, go do a breathing exercise, go do that YouTube, follow this person. You know, it might be just a simple little baby step like that, but it is pushing you (laughs) down this path. Well, it's not pushing you, it's gently asking you to go down a path. So, Rather than listening to the voice of fear that's kept you stuck for such a long time, listen to the softer, gentler voice. And yeah, I do know it sometimes it's going to ask you to do stuff that feels scary and that doesn't feel safe. But just do things that calm you down, that regulate your nervous system. And I've got lots of podcasts on that. So just go onto my website, search nervous system, and you'll find loads of um, podcast episodes on that. But just regulate your emotions because when you are trying to follow your intuition, your survival brain will be like, no, 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 we can't do this, we can't do this. And it won't like it, (laughs) basically, because our survival brain doesn't like us to change and likes us to keep us in the same patterns because they feel safe and they feel easy. But it's through listening to those intuition and making those changes that we can truly transform and stop letting the past hold us back. And that's what I wanted to end on, actually, was that when you came onto this planet, you were fully connected with your intuition. Show me a baby that doesn't know its own needs, doesn't know its own worth, isn't expressing themselves. You know, like they're crying. They believe they're the most important thing on the planet. You totally were connected to your intuition at that point. Like babies know when they're hungry. They know when they're not. They know when they don't want to eat something. Like they're very connected to their bodies. And they're very connected to energy as well. Like if you're really calm and chilled, they're going to be more calm and chilled. They're very like, they're light beings. They're closest to, you know, the universe or whatever you believe in. But, you know, we lose that along our journey. And to and the reason why we lose that is because the adults in our lives start to tell us a different story. And society starts to tell us a different story. And we start to think that what they're saying is better than what we feel to believe to be true you know like I remember as a little girl I knew without any doubt that what I was seeing in my childhood home was not right so the way that my granddad spoke to my grandma the way that my dad spoke to my mum the way my dad spoke to his mum even like the way men were talking to women I knew that that was not right I could feel it in my being And I would, I remember being five 
and being like, this I'm, This is bad. Like, this is really bad and you shouldn't be doing this. And my mum, my grandma, my dad, everyone told me, no, no, no. You, Your place, you be quiet. This is the way it is. So you just got to accept it. They silenced me and they silenced that voice. And that happened in little micro moments so many times that I buried my intuitive voice deep inside of me. My intuitive voice knew, like I've always been quite a sensitive child. So I knew when the adults around me were not okay and not happy. Like it was, I was always like that since as long as I can remember. And, you know, if I would say that to them, they would t- dismiss me and they would tell me I was wrong or they'd get annoyed with me or they'd get angry with me. So I would silence my own voice and that intuition didn't feel safe to follow because to be honest, it wasn't safe to follow. If I was doing what I felt like was that was right, you know, I would have got into a lot of trouble with my dad or in my family. So it didn't feel safe to follow that intuition. But as I got older and my life changed, it was safe to follow my intuition. So that is the transition that you are no longer that child that's not that's not safe. You may be in a situation that doesn't feel safe and that your intuition can't relax and to tell you then what do you need to do about changing your circumstances so you are safe and you can follow it? Because that's why we lose our voice, our intuitive voice, because we've covered it up and we've pushed it down because other people have told us to. But this journey of healing, of growing, is rediscovering that voice and following its guidance. So are you going to be brave and follow the steps it tells you to? Because I'm telling you, that really is going to change your life. But it might piss people off. You know, I know that following my guidance saying like, which was, you know, to be in a relationship with say someone that's not from my culture, which may have upset or annoyed other people. Um, in the past, I wouldn't have done that because I would be too busy trying to please them to feel safe. But I felt like brave enough and strong enough to be able to follow that guidance this time because I knew that my happiness was important. So sometimes you have to be really brave to follow your intuition because it might mean going against your tribe and the people that you love and it might upset people as well. And that can feel quite scary and it can feel really unsafe to do that. And we do really need to step into our bravery when we follow our intuition because it's guiding what's best for you, not what's best for your your mum or your auntie or, or whoever. So remember that that it may take you to places that do not please other people. But that is, again, part of our survival. We do a lot of shit to please other people. And we then we're very unhappy about it. And if we follow our own intuition, our own inner guidance, they may not understand. Learning to feel okay with that and feeling safe in those kind of decisions just comes with healing work. And you might need to work with somebody one-to-one or come and do my course just to help you to learn how you can be okay with other people not being okay with you and your decisions because I know it's hard but if it robs you of your happiness of your peace of your joy there is a price that you're paying to please others that cost is really high when it affects your well-being in that manner so for example I've had my mum on a few times and she shared her story so she won't mind me saying this but when I was a baby when I was around about two I think she did actually leave her marriage because of the home environment and a little bit it wasn't massively to do with my dad at this point it was to do with the circumstances but she didn't feel safe she didn't feel safe bringing up her baby there and she followed her intuition but her family weren't happy about that and they sent her back. So that is an example where she followed a step and actually, you know, our lives would have been very, very different and maybe I wouldn't have suffered the trauma in the way that I did if my mum did follow that step. Her true inner guidance was telling her that this is really unsafe for a child, but then other people with their cultural expectations, their beliefs, their um, own survival programme believe that it was better for her to go back to that situation rather than to be on her own because she was a woman etc so they believed that it was better for her to be in a toxic situation and for her child to be in a toxic situation rather than for her to live on her own and follow her own guidance and how wrong that was because you know I've heard a whole podcast about the traumas that have happened as a result of her going against her own intuition 
And that is the price, basically, when we ignore it and we follow other people, you know, and that's a big price for us and for our own children and things like that. So, you know, starting to listen to that voice and being brave enough to step into it. And if we don't feel brave enough, that just points to us doing some healing work, investing in ourselves and help working with people that can help us to find that strength and that bravery from within so that we can follow that route that our intuition is telling us to follow and qu- quite frankly change our lives. So that's all I wanted to share with you. If you are interested in chatting about how my services can help, I do offer a 30 minute consultation. If you just email me at manpreet at heartshappiness.co.uk. And that's totally free for that first 30 minutes. Well, it is at the moment while I'm recording this. Um, I hope you have a fabulous week and it's been great going through how your intuition can change your life. I hope that this has inspired you to slow down and to listen. And there we have it, guys. An episode completed. I hope you enjoyed it and it raised a load of awareness in your mind. There was alarm bells going. You were all like, ding, that's totally me because that's what I was like when I started this journey. And that is the start of the process, finding out this information and realizing it has happened in your own life. So I really hope it was helpful. And before the next episode coming out next Wednesday, be sure to check us out on Instagram. So it's hearts underscore underscore happiness. Also, we have a YouTube channel where I share the videos I create for Instagram on. So you can check that out. They come on about once a week. And then we also have a Facebook group if you want to join to carry on the conversation. I want to create a community where we're all talking about our very real experiences and traumas. And then there is also my website called heartshappiness.co.uk, which you can check out to join our mailing list so that as I create new services and support tools for you all, you're the first to find out. And I have a freebie on there, so definitely check that out. It's five books that transformed my healing. So if you really want to kickstart and you know you're liking the content in here, these books are like the basis of so much of my knowledge. So definitely check that out. And I will speak to you next week. I'm so excited to continue this journey with you to help you to find your own heart's happiness. Take care.